basically, open product fact uh, started as an April Fool's. Uh, a couple of years ago, on the 1st of April, uh, we basically said uh, we are going to launch a database that's going to replace, that is going to be the beginning of all, f all the, data the database for all things. And uh, for a couple of years, it, st it stayed like this very elaborate uh, April Fool's joke. And then we realized uh, the importance of the circular economy. And uh, we realized that the circular economy is completely broken. Uh, we are surrounded by objects, and some of them no longer serve a purpose uh, uh, for us. We don't like them anymore, uh, we don't have any use, and most of those objects end up in the incinerator, usually. And uh, new objects actually come and replace them in our homes. Uh, it's also a different issue from the food uh, uh, sc barcode scanning for food. Uh, basically, we have to eat every day, so we have to make split decision choices about food. Uh, you don't buy a smartphone or a mower every day. So you buy fewer items, possibly you have some choices to make, uh, but it's also about uh, ensuring the product is maintained well, that you can repair it, that you can use the products you already have for as long as possible. So I will briefly uh, talk about open product facts. Uh, and I will do you a demo of something we've been baking on the mobile app. So we have four challenging pre uh, fragmentation with Open Product Fact. The first one is category fragmentation. So basically, we, you do not recycle a smartphone or a lawnmower in the same way. So we have to treat those objects differently in the way sh we show, for instance, knowledge panels. The second fragmentation is uh, throughout the life cycle of the products. Basically, you have the purchase, uh, you have the maintenance, the repair, the reuse, and the recycling. And all of those stages involve different actors. And basically, uh, they don't talk to each other at all. And as a consumer, you can't possibly know them all. The third fragmentation is geographical. Basically, the circular actors are not the same in France, in the UK, and even within France, for instance, you will not have uh, typically the same uh, recycling community centers uh, in every place, uh, in every territory. And the fourth is an interface uh, fragmentation. Uh, there's no interoperability, inter no single place where you can basically uh, uh, create an, a relationship with the objects that surround you. So it's not a very pleasant uh, experience as a person who owns objects. You usually have this big box in your home with all the manuals, or you throw them away, and, uh, and basically uh, it's a lost opportunity. So the circular fra uh, fragmentation is something we, are, we want to try and tackle with open product facts and cons consolidate uh, uh, usages, uh, circular use usages. So there are a bunch of use cases that probably are already emerging in your mind. Uh, so buy, we could go for buy, but really, so basically uh, buy new stuff, buy more new stuff. So this is definitely something we'll do at some point, perhaps put scores, etc. Uh, but probably a, a more interesting use case is use and repair. Uh, basically, uh, being able to increase the use of objects by l basically uh, uh, finding uh, spare parts, finding uh, uh, someone who's able to repair the, pro the, the product, and we, we are not going to do that uh, ourselves. It's also basically about finding what's already out there and trying to uh, normalize it so that you can, regardless of, any, of the country of the object, have a good experience. The also one very common use case is I have, a, let's say, a driller. Why can't my neighbor benefit from that driller? But how am I supposed to know that the neighbor has a driller? So basically trying to uh, leverage external services or, or trying to do um, or share so that basically uh, products can be shared uh, throughout communities. 
basically any products that you can borrow is not a product you're going to buy. Uh, so sharing, recycling, reuse, uh, or donate the products that you don't need anymore, so that basically they, they find a new owner, a second, a third, a fourth life, Uh, and many of your use cases, uh, it's a list of them, but uh, there are virtually endless uh, possibilities. There are also hard challenges involved with open product facts. The first one is that products lose their barcode after purchase. You don't have barcodes on all your furniture, obviously. Most chairs don't have any barcode. So there will be new technologies to invent to basically find that the chair is uh, of uh, uh, brand A and its model number X. Uh, so we'll, uh, we'll have also perhaps uh, some technologies with visual recognition. The second hard challenge with Open Product Fact is really getting all the objects online, even those who don't have a barcode, and basically empowering people uh, to make use of them, even stuff that was created before the barcode even existed, before computers even existed. And uh, being able to grow uh, micro communities around objects, so all people who care about, I don't know, vintage furniture or something like that. Um, the third hard challenge is that all those products are very different and uh, basically to have environmental impact, scoring and all those kinds of things are going to be very difficult and we as a community will have to rely on other communities. It's, it's not going to be something that's going to be very easy to do alone. We have 26,000 different kind of objects in the world at the very minimum. So that's my next point. There are, yeah, there's a lot of, uh, of things to describe, and it's basically going to implode all the things that we have around taxonomies. Uh, we'll have to think in new, more extens extendable ways to basically describe objects. So uh, there was talks about GS1. GS1 is one option, uh, but they don't have all the solutions. So we can't scale scoring on 36 categories alone. So basically, uh, Stefan and uh, uh, the, uh, the Knowledge Panel uh, workshop, we are talking about extensibility of Knowledge Panel. Once again, it's probably something that we'll need partners to do uh, to uh, uh, category expertise, because we won't be able to score, I don't know, uh, a medical device on our own. Uh, there's also... Uh, new, emerging technology, new emerging technologies like large language models, which allow us to uh, prepare some data models at very large scale. So we have to use them in a thoughtful way, but they offer uh, technical opportunities. So those are examples, for instance, for a, a molecular diagnostic analyzer, a topic I don't know anything about. But uh, so we'll have to use them in a very thoughtful, moderated way, obviously. So creating those uh, missing open APIs for the circular economy, lending, borrowing, and uh, being able for, uh, to make app developers have circular solution uh, and easy APIs that they can use uh, from open product facts. And now we are getting into the juicy part, which is a little demo about what the new uh, open product fact project can do. So the question, uh, who has uh, iPhones in the room by show of hands? Okay, so sorry for you. We are going to, to do some basic iPhone bashing. Uh, I own an Android phone. So the question is, are iPhones becoming more repairable over time? And so basically we have, uh, people have sent to open food facts iPhones instead of food for years. So we have all the iPhones since 2012. And so we moved them to open product facts and we added the repairability index to see if they are becoming more repairable. So here's the answer. So iPhone 7 6.5, iPhone 7 plus 6.4, there's no logic. Uh, 8, 6.5, 6 6.3, it, it, it kind of goes backward. It's a new genera newer generation, it goes backward. Then it goes forward with iPhone 11 and uh, backward with the iPhone 13, 
uh, forward with the iPhone 13 mini. So there's absolutely no logic. Uh, iPhone 14, iPhone 15. So there's a little progress being done. But if you compare that to, for instance, the Fairphone, uh, the iPhone 16 Pro Max, which uh, came out last week, so just one week ago, is still 8.3 when the Fairphone, for instance, is 9.3. So it's an interesting uh, first use case. You can basically compare products based on repairability. The, um, and we also found a chocolate iPhone <laughs> on Open Food Fact. And we found an iPhone 6S perfumed body spray, which... Uh, I'm not sure of the, the actual use case, but... <laughs> uh, so basically those phones will also have to model them in a brand new way. You may have heard about Folksonomy Engine, uh, which is basically a key value system to model anything uh, uh, possible. So basically, the, the Folksonomy Engine allows us... Oh, sorry. Uh, allows us to model um, any kind of... of uh, of products. I will come back to that in a moment. But I'm going to show you uh, basically what, what you can also get on Open Product Fact, which is carbon impact. So we mapped smartphones. You can see that uh, buying a smartphone is actually uh, around 90 kilograms of uh, carbon emission. Uh, you can see the repairability index, so uh, matching with your preferences. Oops. Um, and also, we are introducing, for friends only, sorry for international, uh, uh, but the, there's basically a way to contribute to that. I, I'll come back to that in a second. We are introducing for friends a way, uh, a prefiguration on how to find second-hand smartphone. So either we, we'd, like, we'd very much prefer donations, but it's complicated for smartphones because people usually don't donate uh, those kind of things, uh, or buy secondhand. So we, we chose uh, uh, two websites uh, which have a lot of inventory on phones, uh, but basically we'll have to balance the ethics of traders uh, with uh, basically ensuring a good user experience so that people actually find phones, uh, second-hand phones, and that people can access it wherever they are, like in the capital or uh, in a remote area. And also that, that poses a question of neutrality for open uh, food facts. And so the Volksonomy engine is, uh, is definitely uh, a very flexible, so you, you have a lot of data on a phone actually. Uh, that's first page, second page, third page, fourth page, and there's even more. So basically, it's going to be also a data challenge to model all that and to extract all the data that's useful. So it's a lot of work, as you can imagine. So we'll need all hands of on board. It's going to be a multi-year uh, effort. Uh, but the idea is to be able to eventually uh, be more circular for all products. So there's a mobile app uh, integration that's coming soon. I will demo it after the, after during the break. If you want to look at a universal app, uh, there are many features that are possible uh, that will do over probably many years. Um, and uh, for instance, uh, adding support for producers, uh, artificial intelligence. Uh, having a digital uh, booklet of all your objects so that you can uh, find warranties and uh, basically maintenance uh, solution with Save My Products, so kind of a companion of your objects. Um, and uh, so how you can help is basically you have a lot of documentation already in the wiki, so you can help augment the, the, the documentation, uh, especially for those who are not in France we have several nice pages, uh, so basically allowing you to add support for your countries. So for instance, you can add the local uh, uh, non-profits for repair and maintenance or, or donations. And as usual with Open Food Facts, you can contribute in so many ways. So using the app, uh, translations, word spreading, taxonomies, hacking, and more. And that's it from me.